Hey guys, Frost here. Welcome back. I wanted to take some time today to discuss about Phase 3. As you might know, on 12th of February, Phase 3 will go live and um, you might want to know a thing or two about this phase. What does it mean? Now, first of all, the most important thing um, will be Blackwing Lair, the 40-man raid. Uh, compared to Molten Core, Blackwing Lair will have way superior rewards. Uh, you will find out as well as after you get a couple of pieces from this uh, raid. Now, to get attuned, it's possible starting now. You just have to go outside of the portal of Blackrock Spire and uh, kill the Scar Shield, Scar Shield Quartermaster. He will drop a thing called the uh, Black Hands Command. Uh, it can drop in a raid, it's no problem. Uh, you do a upper Blackrock Spire run and you tune at the orb behind Drakisat. Now, moving on, uh, another important thing uh, are the class quests, and I'm gonna try to specify only the ones that uh, are important as uh, players will not make mistakes in choosing the items from the quests. Now, the very first quest, the warrior quest, that will be presented with very good rewards, a helmet, a pair of shoulders, and a trinket. Uh, here, a lot of players make mistakes choosing either the helmet, which can be easily replaced by the Lionheart helm, or the shoulders, which can be replaced by uh, True Strike shoulders, or even others later on. Um, the Diamond Flask, however, for one minute it will give you 75 strength. Uh, make sure you make no mistakes, as um, this is the best trinket you can equip for short fights. Let's say, for example, Ragnaros. You pop the flask and for one minute you have extra 75 strength, which is uh, 150 attack power, so make no mistake here. The second quest, which is important in my opinion, uh, the hunter quest uh, is presented with uh, two trinkets and uh, a polearm. Uh, here some trinkets that play Beast Mastery will try to get the one which increases the critical strike of their pet. I would recommend getting the Devil Sorai, which that will because that will be able to provide 150 attack power for 20 seconds, which is quite huge when you burst or in PvP and both PvE. Um, make sure you make the correct choice here. Rogue, the Rogue, uh, I think the best thing you can choose from here are the boots, as when you're fighting, uh, when you're farming outdoors, uh, increased stealth might help you when you try to pick a Lotus or uh, Rich Torium Veins, uh, especially versus other rogues, which are quite competitive, or to Forcilitus farming. Priest, um, the Trinket Blessed Players feels like the best option, increases your spell damage by 190 for 20 seconds. This can be used in a variety of situations. Uh, make sure you pick this one. Shamans uh, have a, a totem-like trinket, which uh, you might want to choose. Restores a lot of mana. Um, the downside is that it shares um, cooldown with a water uh, totem, so be aware of that. Make sure you choose the enamored water totem. And uh, the last and uh, not the least, uh, the warlock. Warlock is tricky, just like the warlock, because warlocks are presented with uh, a nice weapon, a nice robe, but a great trinket. Now, the important thing why I'm presenting those items, it's uh, because of their unique uniqueness. While most of the items that you get from the quest can be replaced, the ones that I'm talking about, they're quite unique. For example, most warlocks will be prone to get the, the weapon because it looks cool, or the robes because they don't have a good robe at that level. But if you pick this uh, trinket, this could be good for uh, almost anything. PvP. Imagine you don't have once uh, a soul shard or enough mana to summon a pet, you can do it instantly, and uh, the uniqueness is what makes those items great. The rest of the classes, it uh, doesn't matter what reward you choose, they're pretty straightforward. Um, enjoy your class quest. Moving on, I want to talk about uh, some of the craftable items that will be released, and I want to start with the Torium Brotherhood. Uh, Rejoice Casters, uh, Nightfall will be available. Nightfall is an axe which on proc uh, will increase spell damage from all targets by 15%. Mages and Warlocks will probably be able to compete with Warlocks, uh, with Warriors and, war and Rogues, uh, probably won't happen, but still, 
your um, Red Paladin in your guild or your Enhancement Shaman will have a weapon to DPS and feel proud. Uh, flare Core Leggings, a pair of pants which uh, could be used by Warlocks, I would say. It's their choice if they want or not. Uh, they will be crafted though. And one more important uh, item, Core Hound Belt. Increases your healing by 62. This is gonna become best in slot, I think. And um, that's about it in terms of uh, Torium Brotherhood. Other things important are uh, Timberman Holt. Timberman Holt comes with two new recipes, which uh, everyone expected them to be in game from the beginning, but they weren't. Um, apparently, they pushed them faster into the game because. Um, 15 agility and 25 agility on 100 and 200 weapons will be available. Uh, hunters, again, rejoice. Um, no more 9 intellect on 2 handers. And it's time to have a nice enchant. Um, either if you get 2 15 agility on 1 handers or 25 agility on a 2 hander, they come available at friendly and honored. Most major enchanters will have them, so I think it's a huge upgrade. Speaking of uh, upgrades, um, 24 spell power to Argent Dawn, 24 spell power on Bracers will be available too. And speaking of all of those, Nightfall uh, and chance for healers and chance for DPS, uh, it will be only better for Blackwing Lair. Uh, although I think Blackwing Lair is not gonna be that hard, probably a bit harder than Molten Core, all of those items help. So, um, other than that, I wanna. Um, touch a bit on um, Darkmoon Fair. Darkmoon Fair uh, will come with uh, a variety of items. First of all are the necklaces, uh, the amulet of the Dark Moon, and the orb of the Dark Moon, both, both costing 1200 tickets. Now the way you get tickets with Darkmoon Fair is uh, by exchanging materials or items. Uh, the most popular are the dense grinding stones which are made by Blacksmith, 8 of them will give you 20 tickets. Thorium Widgets, um, 6 of them, which are made with engineering, will give you 20 tickets. Uh, right now I have 360 tickets. I'm prepared to get my spell power necklace because uh, I didn't get the Choker of the Fire Lord yet. And I think this is a great uh, item to have until you get a better upgrade. Uh, rugged Armor Kits, uh, 8 will give 20 tickets. And either Evil Bat Eye or Glowing Scorpion Blood. The Evil Bat Eyes drop from the Bats in Plaguelands and the Glowing Scorpion Blood are uh, dropped by the um, Spiders in Silatus. If you want to start uh, early to farm your tickets, you can do it now and exchange them when Darkman Fair comes in a month. 10 Evil Bat Eyes will be 20 tickets and 10 Glowing Scorpion Blood will be 20 tickets, so you have time to prepare. Although you can also uh, get your dense grinding stones, your thorium widgets, or your rugged armor kits, while you can, while you can and what they're cheap, I'm not saying that they will go high in price, but there's a chance they will get a bit more expensive. Uh, moving on, Darkman Fair also provides uh, three new trinkets, four new trinkets. Excuse me, one is just not that great, uh, in my opinion. The first one and the most important one is the Darkman card Blue Dragon, uh, two percent on chance. Uh, Successful, successful spell cast to allow 100% of your mana to continue regenerating for 15 seconds. Now this is going to be a trinket desired by healers. The problem with it is that uh, the Ace of Beast, the Ace of Beast, drops only from the Beast in Upper Blackrock Spire, and um, might be quite expensive to craft if you don't get lucky, lucky to obtain one. But nevertheless, um, the fights in Blackwing Lair are. Uh, twice or three times longer than the ones in Molten Core, especially fights like uh, Razor Gore and Blackwing Lair, which can get extended quite by a lot and uh, mana will be a problem for some healers, uh, even with major mana potions in their bags. Good luck on acquiring this trinket, moving on, the card Maelstorm, which drops uh, from the... it's obtained by the Elemental deck. This one will not be that hard to, to craft because uh, the Ace of Elementals drops from Hydra Spawn DM, which is part of the jump run performed by most of the range classes. I just made a guide on it, uh, you saw it probably. So, uh, this is one I'm gonna try to obtain in my Rogue. 
also the Dark One card Heroism. Sometimes heal the bearer by 120 to 181 damage. Um, this is for melee, especially for rogues and fury warriors. I, I guess uh, it could be a great grinding trinket. And I'm gonna make this one too. The ace drops from King Gordok in DM. A, the rest of the cards will drop all over the world, don't worry. You'll find them at the auction house. You'll be able to trade with guild members, with friends. It's gonna be fun. And uh, least but not last, um, Darkman card, Twisting Nether. Uh, the ace drop from Darkmaster Gandling and School of Ends. Gives the wearer a 10% chance of being able to resurrect with 20% health and mana. Um, it feels like a mean trinket. Um, <laughs> Although it might be nice to have, uh, picture yourself trying to pick a Lotus and someone attacking you of the opposing faction, you have this trinket equipped, you resurrect and you kill him and voila, he never knew what happened. I guess it's a meme trinket but hey, why the hell not? If you have the deck, you can obtain it, it doesn't cost you anything and it's nice content. This, this is about uh, Darkmoon Fair, what I want to talk about, it's about uh, Words on Gold Tree Words. Um, they decided to add the Words on Gold Tree Words too. And um, honestly, if you don't want to get the rep to exalt it to Words on Gold, you don't have to. Most of the rewards um, available for the majority of classes are pretty decent, but they're not really on top with tier 2. Like, uh, you know, you get pants and bracers from uh, Words on Gold. Uh, the only class or the only class that should strive to get exalted to with the Warson Gulch for the items, not because if you want to do pre mates for fun, just do it and get exalted, are the plate wearers, warriors, and red paladins because of the Outrider plate leggings. The Outrider plate leggings provide 28 strength, 27 stamina, 1 hit, 1 crit, which, which makes them best in slot both in um, PvP and PvE. Also on top of that you get the Berserker Bracers which uh, also will become best in slot for your class as a Warrior or a Red Pala. Those uh, things are worth uh, getting exalted for, maybe you can do weekends, maybe you can have a pre-made, maybe we'll get eventually weekend battlegrounds if you know when uh, reputation gain is increased and honor increased. Um, the only thing you the only time you can change them are probably in AQ40. I'm not sure, but probably the tier 2.5 will change them. If not, Titanic leggings in phase 5, it's the same. So if you want to strive for something, uh, this is a good point. The other ones are not really that great. They can easily be replaced by tier gear or something else. I think this is it, guys. I hope you have a great phase 3. Uh, it's a lot of content I'm hyped for. Uh, make sure you make some investments on the side, maybe a couple of herbs, consumables from BVL, maybe something from Dark One Fair that you think it will sell, maybe a lotus, maybe a crystal, make some money, and uh, until next time, stay frosty. Thanks for watching, guys.